What's going on YouTube? Hope you guys are having a good day. So today we're going to talk about uh, setting your injector dead time in a Megascore ECU and we're also going to talk about how you find what that is. So a lot of it has to do with injector impedance which is also another name for ohms or resistance. So what I'm going to do right now is pull up the tune for my car and I'm going to show you guys something. So, here is my car right here, and what I want you guys to look at is in the fuel settings under injector dead time. Now each injector is going to have a different dead time depending on the manufacturer specifications, and that's mainly because they're measuring the injector dead time at a certain voltage. In Megasquirt, it'll tell you, like right here, injector dead time at 13.2 volts per millisecond. So what we're looking for, uh, if you guys kind of expand this, and then at the bottom there's some notes down here, it'll tell you a little bit more about this. So for an injector that is uh, a low impedance injector, which is right around 2 to 5-ish ohms, uh, you'll have a lower injector dead time. And then for a higher impedance injector, around 14 ohms, you'll have around 0.9 milliseconds. So Typically, you're going to go off of the manufacturer specifications, but if you can't find that, um, we're going to cover some good ways to look it up. So what I like to do is check the impedance of my injectors. If you have a high impedance injector, the manufacturer will give you a spec. If you don't know what your injectors are, here's a good way to check. So right here, I've got a, uh, a multimeter. Really, all you want is something that can read an impedance. So you can change your dial or your selector to ohms or impedance and what you're going to do is test your injector. So you're going to do, there's two leads on it, you test it across it, there you go, 14 ohm. Now that beep is just telling me that there's continuity, some meters don't have that. It's just the same as touching this together. When your impedance is really low you'll get that beep signifying that it's uh, a connection inside. And these are just a coil in there, so that makes sense. So we're going to test there's from one lead to the other, and I've got 14 ohms. Now these are a factory set of Ford injectors. These are actually a uh, like a 19 pound injector. So what I would do is go to my table and say, hey, I don't know what kind of injectors these are, so I'm going to start off at the recommended 0.9 seconds with dead time. It's pretty simple. And then if you get a low impedance injector, you have less uh, less dead time. Is that dead time on the injector? Uh, the injector is going to pulse every time it's told to fire, and the dead time is how much time it's going to spend off in those pulses. Because if you look at an injector in a spray pattern, when you energize it, it's going to pulsate that injector. So your dead time is the off time. So with an injector that is a lower impedance, it doesn't have to drive as much current to it to get it to, um, to fire that injector in the same time. The lower impedance injectors, they, uh, they draw more current, so they have to have a little bit less dead time so they can fire more fuel. I guess it would be the same amount of fuel, but a lot of that depends on how the injector is built and what size the injector is. So go off the manufacturer specs, but if you don't know what to put in here, you don't know your injectors, you can always test them to get a good baseline. Uh, if you don't have a good injector dead time on your tune, it can actually it can actually be semi-detrimental to, to your tune. I wouldn't say detrimental, but like if you look here in your fuel table, the numbers that your car needs to run, uh, you know, to run the AFRs you're looking for. Like, look at mine. Even up in boost, I'm at like 116 percent, and a lot of that has to do with my fuel system, right? I've got twin in tank pumps. I've got good fuel pressure, so I don't have to worry about it. But if you're getting to the end of an injector's uh, duty cycle, sometimes you'll see, you know, or if your fuel system's not up to snuff, you'll have to try to give it a higher number to try to get more flow through that injector but your typical numbers are not going to be terribly high and if you get to a point to where you're looking at all of these and it's like okay I've got 120 across the board otherwise I can't meet my FRs there's probably a setting wrong somewhere like look at this so this is a Fox Body Mustang it's a 408 and I'm right around 47 ish to, to idle 
And then as I start driving, we're at 74, 72, and then when we get into some power, we're at 90, 97. So a lot of it just kind of, um, it'll taper up, but if you're noticing very, very high numbers, there could be some setting issues, but I'm sure if you've gotten this far, you've already figured that out. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Short video, just wanted to kind of run through that. Um, I am working on my 351 Windsor in this car. The 408 is in the process of getting uh, figured out. We don't know what's wrong with it yet, but we're figuring out what we're gonna do with the 351 Windsor. I've got a trick flow manifold for it. We found low compression on, on one whole side, and I don't know if it's a, a head gasket or if it's piston rings. It seemed like all of the, com all of the compressed air that I was putting into it was coming out of the actual um, around the pistons and into the crankcase, but still got a little bit more to do. I've been busy, so I haven't had a ton of time on it. I just wanted to walk you guys through this because I had uh, a couple of questions that came up about it the last few days. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a good one. Drive fast, take chances. See you in the next video.